Hi there, I'm Jamie Dunbar, and welcome back to the Dunbar Dog Diaries, The Puppy Next Door. This is week three, video one. In our last training session, I did some work on position changes using Daisy's cot style bed as a training platform. In this video, I'm going to introduce Daisy to a long term confinement area so that she can spend a few hours alone this weekend while her family goes on a little outing. However, before we jump into the video, I just wanted to say that if you are enjoying this series and want to learn more about dog training and behavior, make sure to check out our self-guided dog training courses at DunbarAcademy.com. We have hundreds of hours of dog training videos, lectures, and seminars, as well as worksheets and eBooks, all of which can be purchased individually or as part of our $20 Top Dog Academy subscription. Alternatively, if you're interested in real time live online puppy classes with some of the best puppy training instructors in the world, check out our sister site, SeriousPup.com. Our small live online classes will teach you all the essential skills you need to raise and train your puppy or adult dog. And the best part is you will have access to a real live instructor who will coach and guide you through any issues you might have and answer all of your dog training questions. It's easily one of the best ways to get the support you need to raise a puppy all without leaving the comfort of your own home. If you are interested in either of these, we'll provide links to both in the description down below. Okay, with that out of the way, let's jump into the video. All right, here we are on day five with Daisy, and we're actually just gonna do a short little session with her today. I recently learned the neighbors this weekend are going away for a few hours. So we need to get Daisy set up with a long-term confinement zone, which is what we've got going on here. It's a long and narrow pen, the crate at one side, and uh, a toilet at the other end. So I'm gonna let Daisy out, and hopefully, uh, she hasn't gone pee in a little while, hopefully she's gonna use her potty. All right, Daisy, welcome to your long-term confinement area. So let me tell you a little bit more about the setup here while Daisy is exploring. Um, we have a long and narrow crate. That's definitely the better way to set it up because what we're utilizing here is her natural desire to pee and poop far away from where she settles down. Now, Daisy's very comfortable settling down in her crate, so we're just using her crate in this corner. Uh, Daisy's never seen such beautiful, nice green grass before, so she's playing with that a little bit, but um, hopefully she will get over that and then need to go pee soon. But if not, we're gonna put her back in her crate and uh, you know, we'll let her have some water. That's another very important thing for the long-term confinement area. We gotta have water and some chew toys. Now we also have the chew toys that are in her crate and that's probably the better place to put them because we want her to know when it's time to settle down, you go inside your crate. That's where you're gonna relax. Now, <laughs> Daisy's not cooperating right now, but hopefully that means she doesn't really need to pee and if she did need to pee, she'd go there and pee. Um, if she continues to tear up her toilet, well, I don't know what we're gonna have to do. Might have to think about another toilet material. But I guess also, you know, maybe she'll get bored of that. The idea here being that you know, the chew toys are a much more satisfying thing to engage with because they actually have tasty food inside, whereas Grass is probably not super tasty. Um, you know, she might want to nibble it on it a little bit. But the hope would be that uh, by confining her in an area with chew toy stuff with food compared to grass, she'd be more interested in the chew toy stuff with food. Now, the fact that this is her, her first introduction to such nice green grass <laughs> means that she's, she's pretty interested in playing with it initially. Um, just like usual, with a potty trip, we are going to give her a couple minutes, see if she needs to pee. If not, I'm gonna put her back in a crate and give her another opportunity to try again in about half an hour. Um, what the goal is ultimately though, is to be able to leave her in a place like this for several hours. And she's gonna have all of her needs met. She's gonna be able to drink water. She's gonna be able to use a potty that's appropriate. She's gonna be able to settle down in her crate with her chew toys. Um, when we were, if we are to actually leave her, what I'd want to do is I'd secure the crate door in an open position or even remove the door entirely. So the crate is functioning essentially just as her bed um, inside this space. And it's not 
the, the crate wouldn't be confining her, the playpen would be confining her. All right, <laughs> doesn't seem uh, doesn't seem like she's gonna go pee right now, so I'm gonna put her back in her crate and we'll try again in half an hour. Maybe we'll talk to our puppy experts about how to troubleshoot this particular scenario. There you go, darling. So go back in there, and we will try again in a little bit. You don't need to go potty. Um, I might see, though, if you want any more water. You want any more water right now? That grass is pretty exciting, I know. And no, so we're gonna close her up. She's got some chew toy stuff with food in there, so that should keep her entertained. We'll try again in a moment. Well, we'll try again in about 30 minutes. See you then. Okay, so half an hour ago, we tried to get her to pee in her long-term confinement area on her indoor puppy potty. Didn't work, she was tearing apart the grass. So we're gonna try again, maybe make a few adjustments. So. Daisy, come on, we're going to try and use your indoor puppy potty. Now, something uh, we do when we take her to a real potty, we pick her up and we run her right there. Part of that is because we don't want to waste any time. We want to make sure that she doesn't have the chance to pee anywhere she doesn't want to go. But you know, the other thing that it does kind of gets things moving around in there, you know, gets the juices flowing you know what I mean. So we're going to do a little bit of that right here. Bow, 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 bow. And then I'm going to put it right on her potty and say, go potty. Good girl. Good sniffing. Yeah. Good sniffing. Good girl. No, no, we don't want you to chew on it. No, thank you. So if she's chewing on it, we're, we're not excited about that. So I'm going to redirect her away from that. Hey, Daisy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Daisy, go potty. Come on, give her a chance. Good sniff. Go potty. Go potty. Over here. Go potty. Go potty. She's sniffing. I like that. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. Good. Good. Good girl. Good girl. Good. Go potty. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Yay, Daisy. Oh, you did it. You used your indoor potty. I'm so proud of you. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. There's a treat. There's another treat. These are got some enhanced kibble here. A regular kibble with some freeze-dried liver dust on it. And we are gonna tell her that was so good. So many treats for that. This way, the next time she's in here, in her playpen for several hours all by herself, she needs to go pee. She's gonna know where to go. Yeah, you wanna come out and do a little tug? Ooh, do a little tug? Yes. Yes, we are. Oh, we are celebrating your indoor Puppy potty, way to go, way to go, way to go. All right, so now she's empty. I might do a little play and training with her, but uh, that's what we wanted to do. So I'll see you next time. Okay, so Daisy went pee on her indoor potty. We rewarded her high value treats and a play session. We've been playing and training for a little bit. Now I'm actually gonna put her in this long-term confinement area as if it was a long-term confinement area. You know, earlier I had her in the crate with the crate door closed. She didn't have access to the whole playpen. Now I'm gonna show you how I would actually leave her for several hours if I needed to. All right, Daisy, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, good girl, there you go. Okay, so Daisy's gonna go inside of the playpen. Now, I do want to grab a uh, little Velcro thingy here because I want to keep this door open. I don't want the door getting closed and having her not be able to get into her little bed. Oh, wait, no, that's not how that works. Let's see. Maybe if I put it up here, it'll be slightly less accessible. Uh, so. 
we've got got this door locked open. We are going to want to get some chew toys. And we've got her regular kibble here. So you see we've got a, we've got her special extra high value treats there, but we've just got some regular kibble here. There we go. Put those in there where we want her to settle down. Oh, Snoop's, Snoop's dropping, dropping stuff. There you go. We want her to settle down inside her crate happily. There we go. Boom. Okay, so she now has her playpen area. She's got her water dish, right? So she can drink water. We've put the water dish also far away from her uh, potty. Um, so this is very clearly the area she's gonna wanna keep clean. It's got her water, it's got her crate, her bed, it's got her chew toys in there. So if she needs to go pee or poop, she can go over there to her potty, especially now that we've rewarded her for using that potty. Uh, with some high value treats. Now, when we actually leave her, we're not gonna be able to redirect her away from the grass, um, but hopefully the chew toys, stuff with food will kind of do that for us. Um, she might tear up some of the grass. I guess that's just the way it goes. We might have to get more grass. And uh, hopefully after a little while of tearing up and chewing grass, that'll get boring and she'll be more interested in the chew toys. So now this is where we could leave her if we needed to go out for a couple of hours, uh, I guess while I'm here, I'll say, hey, Daisy, Daisy, no thanks, no, don't do that, don't do that. Here you go, get your chew toys, get your chew toys. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, it probably is a good idea the first few times that uh, you put her in here to supervise a little bit so that you can redirect away from the things that you don't want her playing with, like this, uh, like this grass. You'll also notice we have a very tall crate, and even so, she jumped up on it. Uh, you want to make sure your crate is, sorry, your pen, you want to make sure your pen is tall enough that there's no way she's climbing out, and really, she sh shouldn't even be able to imagine climbing out. Um, and I'm going to try to generally avoid going over the top of the crate. I'm going to use the door instead if, uh, if I want to go inside, so she's not thinking about going over the top. Let me get this out here where I can use it. I can more easily redirect her to it. Let's see if that works. So yeah, get your snoop, honey. Yeah, there you go. Right, isn't that much more fun than that boring old grass? No, Daisy, come here. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, there you go. Ooh, look at that. Good girl. Yeah, that's much better. So, yeah, I'm gonna sit here for a little while. I'm gonna try and keep her away from the grass by bringing her over here, or I'm gonna try to keep her away from the grass. I don't want her tearing it up. She needs to go over there to pee. Daisy, come here. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, if she needs to go pee, obviously I wanna do that, but I don't particularly want her tearing it up. So I'm gonna stay here for a little while, try and encourage her, stay over here. Daisy, come here. Yeah, give your snoop. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm curious to uh, talk with our experts, see what they have to think about all this. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Okay, so that was very interesting. I was very pleased that we were able to get Daisy to pee in her indoor puppy potty so that we could reward her for it. But she also really enjoyed pulling up the grass in her potty and it was very difficult to get her to leave it alone. Having seen that, I really didn't want to leave her unsupervised with the grass because it seemed like she was having so much fun tearing it up that she wasn't going to stop and instead was going to form a grass pulling habit. Now, this is exactly the sort of thing I was hoping would happen in this video series. We tell people that sod can be great for an indoor puppy potty and it can, and it sounds great in theory. But as you can see, when I tried it, I ran into some issues and had to do a little troubleshooting. And so, when it came time for my neighbors to actually leave Daisy alone in her long-term confinement area, I didn't want them to use grass. So, I had them use a litter pan with a little bit of dirt, some wood chips, and leaves taken from their yard, from the area that she's been using for a potty. This sort of material is less exciting to play with than the grass, and it worked great. 
She certainly made a little bit of a mess, bringing a few of the leaves and wood chips out of the litter pan. But while they were gone, she peed in her indoor potty, she didn't pee anywhere else, and she didn't get into any real trouble, which is the whole point. Let's see what Kelly has to say about it. Hi, Kelly. How's it going today? Hi, Jamie. Uh, it's going. It's going okay. Uh, oh, good. Um, oh, good. You know, you may notice that I have a, an interesting outfit today. I like the accessory. It's looking very chic and piratey. Yes. It, yes, it is not International Pirate Day. It is um, just a little, little something so that our viewers don't have to look at my eye, which I injured over the weekend. And... Um, it's kind of pop swollen and puffy and ugly right now. So oh. I thought I'd spare everyone and put on a fashionable, well, I can't even, fashionable, um, I have no depth perception, I can't see, a fashionable eye patch instead. Uh -huh. And um, yes, because I want to be able to see the screen, I still am wearing my glasses with my, my one good eye. So, All right. Here we go. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about your injury. I hope it recovers soon. I hope you're not in too much pain or discomfort. But uh, so we just watched the video of introducing Daisy to her long term confinement area. Um, I'm very curious to hear what you had to say. Obviously, we had to do a little bit of troubleshooting along the way. Yeah, that was a great video, actually. And I was very impressed. Um, you know, it's the long term confinement area is an interesting thing because, I mean, it's, it's very useful and it's necessary for some puppies. Um, I would say extra young puppies under under nine, 10 weeks of age, um, small breed puppies for sure, uh, households where people are gone, must be gone, you know, for four hours at a stretch or longer, people who cannot, um, for, you know, for reasons other than just inconvenience, cannot you know, get up in the middle of the night who need their sleep um, and cannot be disturbed for, you know, a long period of time. But I, I do, uh, if if you don't fit any of those categories, I often um, don't recommend necessarily putting a long term confinement uh, toilet in toilet in your long term confinement pen, um, from, and just treating it like a regular crate, but larger. But um, if you do need a toilet in there, uh, it, it's it's bittersweet, right? It can be very convenient, but it can also be a little bit of a pain in the butt to organize and and uh, make sure that the puppy utilizes. And I think you saw that a little bit, but you handled it really well. Um, I see you chose grass for your substrate, and that is a typical substrate for most people to want to use, right? They're, they want their puppies to go on grass in their gardens. And, um, but that is something that is gonna be specific to, the, to everyone's situation, right? So we do wanna make sure we highlight that. Uh, if your puppy isn't going on grass in your yard or your garden or in your neighborhood or wherever else that you are, toileting them on the regular, then grass would not be the substrate for you. You want it to be the same or a similar substrate if possible um, so that it's the most familiar thing and to avoid any confusion. That said, um, it is good for puppies to learn to go on more than one substrate. You know, we talked about that a little bit in the past, I believe. It's good if they can be a little bit flexible in case you have to take a road trip or move or, you know, have them be, um, you know, cared for at somebody else's house. Uh, you know, if they've only ever gone on one substrate, and especially if they're female, sometimes that leads to kind of waiting to find that exact thing. Um, you know, it's like waiting to go home before you go to the bathroom, right? You know, I wanted to go out in public because you don't like public toilets or whatever it may be. So um, puppies can have a similar issue. Um, I love how you set it up. Now, obviously, it should be oblong as it was. I love that you didn't put the door at the potty area so that the puppy would be running to the door and running through potential poop to get in and out when, you, when you're meeting them. So that was a nice setup. And, um, you know, that you, you secured the great door or as you said, you could remove it, um, you know, so that the puppy isn't gonna get trapped or poked or anything like that by the, by the swinging door. So all that was great. Um, I think you notice the grass is really attractive. You said, "How oh, maybe she'll get bored," but she uh, she liked the grass, didn't she? To be fair, that was really nice grass. Like very lush, yeah. Especially for a California puppy, I don't think she'll ever see grass that nice again. It was looked delicious and refreshing, but uh, yeah. So, but that brings up the point. You know, if she is going on a different substrate um, in, at home because she does live in California and they. 
the, the plush lawns are at a you know a, a, are, are hard to find. You know, maybe that's not even what she needs to be going on. Um, and certainly anything with dirt or earth or anything that can be grabbed is, is a potential toy. So puppy pads tend to be the worst for this. Um, unless you're gonna, unless you're planning to potty pad train your puppy permanently, try saying that three times fast. Potty, pup, I can't even say, potty puppy pad. Permanent puppy pod, puppy puppy pad training. Puppy pad potty training. Permanently. Puppy pad potty training. Permanent puppy pad potty training. Um, unless you're doing that because you're going to have a, you know, a little bit of high rise or you want a dog that can go on, for whatever reason, can go on pads, um, you know, permanently. I wouldn't use puppy pads necessarily. Um, I, I would use, you know, um, mulch, wood chips, in some cases, pea gravel. Some people do use um, like litter, there's some kind of litter, um, almost like cat litter type product. Uh, and I wouldn't use toner up newspapers or anything like that because that looks like confetti, it's way too fun. Uh, you don't want anything that the puppy's going to ingest. There are some pellet based, like litter type things for cats and other small creatures. And I think for puppies, like a lot of that's pine and stuff like that. And, you know, it, you want the pellets to be big enough that the puppy isn't interested in them. So my point here is, Think about your situation, but also you may have to experiment. Your first try may not be your final try. Um, find the substrate that works well enough for your puppy that's attractive to them, but not so attractive that it becomes a toy. Um, pea gravel yeah, can so work in this situation. Hmm? On that note, um, you know, I, I think I said at the beginning of the video, the, the impetus for introducing her to the long-term confinement area was the neighbors, you know, whose dog she is, uh, we're going on a trip and she needed to spend several hours in the middle of a weekday, a weekend day by herself. And so based on what she was doing with the grass, I thought leaving her with the grass was going to be problematic. So we ended up leaving her with a litter pan um, with some leaf litter, some wood chips, some dirt kind of taken from the area of the yard where she's been using the potty at their house. And that ended up working pretty well. Um, she made a little mess, but she did go pee in the litter in the litter pan amongst all that stuff. So, yeah. And then um, when you said litter pan, you mean actually like a plastic cat litter pan with a raised edge and everything? Exactly, yeah. It was a plastic cat litter pan from, from the pet store. I think it, you know, like a four inch side. Um, so it was easy for her to get in. Uh, yeah. Kept the stuff so, mostly inside. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good option as long as the puppy's large enough to get in and out. And um, it is nice because it has a hard edge and it's very clean, clear boundary for where we're in and where you're out. And so that, that's a great, a great option as well. I like those little grass patches and for some dogs that'll be fine, but um, yeah, a lot of them are gonna play with that. So you did really well. The, um, the idea of redirecting her onto a toy, you know, and then, and then putting her away was a good one. Um, I also really like that you took, you didn't just put her in the long-term confinement and leave her there, you know, at first, that like you trained her to use the long-term confinement potty area and you rewarded her for that and everything. So um, that was, you know, that was, that was great. And I think it's definitely worth spending the time doing that versus just assuming that that's going to work out okay. So overall, I think that was very successful. And I love hearing that the outcome was that you changed the potty and change the substrate and you know that it, that it worked out um, she's a clever little girl and she does love her crate she does love her chew toys so you're obviously doing a great job there everyone involved is doing a great job there and um now she has another you know another skill another option when um when people have other things to do than let the puppy out every hour or every two hours as it may be at this stage in her life so yeah. well done super 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 job um, and I, I, it highlights what the issues could be, but also there were some nice solutions in there. So, yay! Yeah, you did it. Yeah, I do feel like one of the things I feel like I really learned um, in doing this with Daisy from you and Ian is is how much the long term confinement area is really just a backup. You know, like that if you can avoid using it, it's it's best to really stick with the crate time. Um, and I feel like that's been kind of a revelation, and uh, and something that maybe thinking about how to make clearer in our information for our for our students uh yeah, but yeah. i mean ideally a puppy a puppy has an option isn't going to be home left along too too alone 
home alone for a long time too often. Mm -hmm. um, but it can't happen just with a small breed puppy that comes home at eight or nine weeks of age, but they really can't hold it for more than a half an hour or an hour at a time. And, you know, so you might, you might initially start with something like this. And, and it doesn't mean that you still don't want a play pet, right? If you, even if you're going to be home and able to get the puppy out every couple of hours, you, you still might want to utilize a play pen for like safety and containment while you're working, for instance, but you don't necessarily have to have a toilet in there mm -hmm. if you're going to be able to let them out. So yeah. cool. we should make that, we make that clear to our, to our students. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Kelly. This sure was fun thing. as always. I'll yep, good see, you. see you for the next video. So I'm very happy with that feedback session. Kelly was as pleased as I was that we were able to reward Daisy for using her indoor potty, and she really liked how I hung out with Daisy at first so I could supervise and manage how she behaved in her long-term confinement area, at least at the beginning. Kelly also liked how we ended up resolving the problem with the grass pulling by using a different substrate for Daisy's potty, one that wouldn't be as fun to play with, but would still encourage Daisy to pee in the right place. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode, week three, video two. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about dog training and behavior, make sure you visit DunbarAcademy.com to check out our selection of courses, many of which are completely free. If you'd rather watch more of our videos here on YouTube, just click the links to the right. And if you want to follow us on social media, everything you need is directly below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell for notifications.